Hi, my name is Francesca Neville. I'm an artist and a designer, and I love vintage clothing. Today, I wanna to share with you how to find vintage clothing in thrift stores and secondhand clothing stores. I'm also a costume designer, so I use this skill when I'm designing a show that may be a period piece where I have to find um, clothing from a different decade, like the 1950s or the 1970s. It's a really great skill to have. Um, then you don't have to build everything from scratch. Um, the best way and easiest way to spot vintage is labels, zippers, hardware, like buttons and things, and the fabrics. And then um, silhouettes also plays a part too. So let me show you some fabrics and labels that I have here. Um, I'm drawing from my own personal collection. I own a vintage clothing store called Odd Twin. So I have a lot of vintage mixed in with my own wardrobe. Um, it's, it's just something, I've been wearing vintage since I was 13 years old. Um, it's just a passion I've had for a long time now. <laughs> So let me show you this dress first. This is a 1950s, it's a cotton dress. Um, some things that tell me it's vintage right away are the details here, the sequins around the neckline. It has a really puffy velvet green ribbon. Uh, you turn it around and it has a metal zipper, which it's that's like a really good way to know that this is vintage. They don't use metal zippers anymore. They stopped using them altogether pretty much, I'd say, like by the 80s. They were still using them in the 80s, but so maybe in the 90s. Uh, they say that vintage is true vintage if it's 20 years old or older. So that means that anything before the year 2000 is considered vintage, which I think is crazy because... What I consider vintage is probably 1980s and back, maybe creeping into the 90s I can see, but what I'm gonna be showing you is mostly from the 1980s and back. This dress, the label inside is also another giveaway that it is vintage. It's really simple. It just has the designer's name on there. It does not tell you even a size. It just tells you simply who made it. Um, let me show you a modern dress in comparison to, so you can see what the labels look like and just the zipper and everything. This dress is based on a 1960s pattern, so at first look, I might say, wow, look, I found a vintage dress, but I start to investigate, and I see that it's a, an invisible zipper. It's plastic. The label has sizes in, uh, it says UK and US. A vintage piece is not going to tell you what size it is in Europe. It says made in China on this tag. Uh, the, like I said, the vintage I'm talking about, it's all American made. Um, made in China is always, it means that it's not vintage. And then if you turn the garment inside out and look in the side seam, you'll find more tags talking about fabric content, how to care for this garment, they're usually in several different languages. So um, you know that this isn't vintage. The only tag you might find on the inside of a vintage garment would be a union tag, gar the Garment Workers Union. Um, it's a little red, white, and blue tag. And that's pretty much the only tags you'll find on the inside. So that's a pretty good example of the difference in tags. Let me show you some other patterns of fabrics. I wish that part of, I think, knowing vintage is feeling it. There's different textures. That the, a lot of the fabrics are just cotton. Like this is another 1950s cotton dress and it has fish with, with gems for eyes, like little sparkle rhinestones. Um, let's see, we've got this 1940s dress is just gorgeous. It has metal studded stars all over the dress. It's just so cool. Again, it has the metal zipper. And if you look on the inside, you can see each stud is individually fixed onto the dress there with another very simple tag. There's 
nobody telling me here in different languages how to care for it or the fabric content. This dress is from the 40s, like I said, and its silhouette is very telling of when it's from. In the 1940s, women wore padded shoulders in just about everything. It gave a really extreme and really beautiful silhouette of like an upside down triangle. Their waist was a little tiny and their shoulders were big and wide. Um, it was just very dramatic and beautiful. It was redone in the 1980s. A lot of 1980s you'll see big padded shoulders and the dolman sleeve or the batwing sleeve which, which was popular in the 1940s as well. Um, fashion history is really interesting to study even on a low level because you get to see it repeat itself. Um, the, 19, the 1940s is seen again in the 1980s. Um, the 1930s is seen again in the 1970s. Um, in the 1930s they used a lot of beautiful silk bias cut fabrics, uh, lots of knife pleats, uh, maxi dresses, you know, very long down below the calf. So you see that again in the 70s, except the fabric that they use in the 70s is more polyester or polyester blend. So that's how you can tell, oh, this looks like a 1930s dress, but it's polyester, so it's 1970s. And also the, the labeling will tell you that too. Um, 1920s is mirrored again in the 1960s with a lot of drop waist dresses and the, the bodices aren't fitted in the, in the 1920s, a very loose fitting. Again, in the 60s, you see that. Um, and there's a, a place online called the vintagefashionguild.com. They have a really great label resource. If you're looking for labels and to how to identify vintage pieces by decade or even by year sometimes, they have photographs of all different labels. So, you know, you'd see uh, Hanes label. This is a Hanes, this is like from probably from the 50s, a thermal shirt. You'll see a Hanes label photographed and then they'll show, they'll say this is from the 1950s and you can tell because of the, the, the font of the lettering and the Hanes appears in the top right corner. So maybe a later Hanes piece, you know, we see Hanes still today. This red Hanes symbol is as big as the tag now. It, it shows you the differences from year to year, decade to decade, how the labels have changed. So that is, is a really great resource for dating vintage clothes. I have some other fabric examples here. Some really great ones. This is a 1960s sleeveless top. It's just encrusted in beads and sequins. It's 3D. Uh, it's gorgeous. It has the metal zipper down the back and it's lined with a nice satin soft lining. Um, 1950s, 1960s, you saw a lot of these sorts of tops with sequins, beads, um, fur. This one has fur. This is like late 50s, early 60s with an ermine real fur neckline. The fabric is actually quilted in a paisley sort of pattern and the metal zipper again down the back. One thing I love about vintage garments is the quality and just how beautifully they're made. Like this has this beautiful satin lining, it's hand stitched around the bottom. You're not gonna find a modern day garment with this high of quality. Everything is mass produced today. You're gonna have to pay a lot of money to get something that is just as beautifully made as this. So another bonus for vintage shopping. Um, here's another great top, a Lurex. It's made with Lurex silver thread. It has little beaded balls as a detail on this sewn on scarf. It's just so cool. Again, with the metal zipper down the back. Let me see if I can find some other, some other labeling for you. Here's a great vintage tag. The other thing is that it's just fun to look at vintage tags too. This one's called Lucky Mates with some lucky horseshoes there. They're just really a lot more creative. <laughs> just like the fabrics. Here is a great find. This is a Malcolm Star dress. It's made of 100% silk. 
I found this in a secondhand store for probably five dollars. Malcolm Starr is a famous designer, so this is like a high-end design piece. This particular one, he was doing a line for Neiman Marcus, which is an old department store. So that's why there's two tags in here. You can tell it's from the 70s. Look at that collar. The 70s was famous for those big pointy collars. Um, this one, this is 70s. It has a plastic zipper. See that? No metal zipper, but it's a really old style of plastic zipper. So you can still kind of, it still has the metal um, pull on it. You, it, it's pretty, it, you, it, once you start knowing what the zippers look like and the hardware, it, it gets really easy to spot vintage. Here is a piece I found. It's just gorgeous. It's very old. I would date it around turn of the century. It's handmade with ribbon and it's crocheted. And it has hook and eye closure down the back. Finding something like this to me is always exciting because it's just so beautiful. Um, pieces like this are often fragile. So for costuming, sometimes you can't always use the vintage pieces you find while you're thrift shopping because actors are wearing these pieces over and over again, performance after performance, sweating under the hot lights, tearing them off backstage for quick changes. So even though you might not be able to use the actual vintage pieces you find while you're shopping, if you're costuming, you still have the piece to build your own from. You can reconstruct it um, and you have the actual original to go from so that you get it accurate. You make an accurate period piece, which is important in costuming. And the final thing I'll show you is, I really love vintage t-shirts. I'm sort of a low level hoarder of vintage t-shirts and other vintage clothing. So um, when I look for t-shirts, it's hard these days because t-shirts are now made to look vintage. They make a lot of band t-shirts to look vintage. Jeans are made to look vintage because that silhouette is back in style. It's on trend. So labels are really helpful with t-shirts as well. Here's an old t-shirt. Snoopy's telling us that girls and root beer are not the answer. Uh, this one was easy to date actually because it says right on there, copyright 1958, right there under the picture. But if you still look at the tag, it's really, it's really vintage looking. Champion tags don't look like this anymore. This company is still in business. They make sportswear, but you know, that's definitely a vintage label. Here's a 1980s sweatshirt with a very 1980s tag with that grid in behind the jerseys. It just tells you the size. Here's 80, you know, 1980s. Still, it doesn't have all those extra tags. It just tells you how to wash it. It's made of cotton and polyester. Real simple. Um, in comparison, here's a band t-shirt that is not vintage that could trick you. This is from H&M. And right there, you can see it's not vintage. The label is telling, it has two labels, it's huge. Um, it's telling me sizes from Europe, Canada, US, Mexico. It tells me in French, it's made in Turkey. <laughs> so, you know, again, the labels are really telling the tagging and everything. If I turn this shirt inside out, just like I did that dress, I'll find in the side seam more tags so many more tags telling me in every different language what the fabric content is how to wash it should i dry clean it so you know it's it becomes once you start seeing the difference and feeling the difference you know it's really easy to spot vintage when you're out thrifting and it's a treasure hunt and it's so fun when you come home with a big pile of awesome vintage clothing <laughs> So I hope that I was able to teach you something today. I love sharing my knowledge about vintage clothing and just clothing in general, costuming. In fact, I'm going to be teaching um, some costuming classes at CTL's summer behind the scenes classes this year. It's a three week costuming course and I think it's for junior high and high schoolers. So if you wanna register for that, it's ctlshows.com. I'm super excited to teach everybody about costuming.
in the summer. Um, please come back and next week I'll have a different episode. I'll try to cover some more about vintage clothing, but if you have questions or you want me to cover a specific topic, uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and I'll see if I can get to your questions. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.